One thing I want to make clear about your role and Panassas in general, um, you have, uh, your company has a long history in, in parallel file systems and scale out supercomputing. Yes. Um, so let's just walk through, you and I have talked about this monolithic supercomputer era where everything began uh, into developing parallel file systems to be able to distribute work. Um, where does all of this, uh, uh, where do you start with this and where's it leading you now? And, and how do you leverage that experience into where things are going? And just set the stage for us, if you could. Sure. So the, uh you go back to the 1990s, right? Uh, high performance computing was supercomputers. This is the Cray era machines, Cray 2s, Cray XMP, YMP, right? They were, I described them as single monolithic computers because it was all in one uh, memory access domain. The, in the 90s, the late 90s, the software guys figured out how to parallelize a single computation so that it spread across multiple independent computers. It was a software innovation. That's what led to scale out. So in the, the late 90s, early 2000s, that's when HPC went scale out. So you look at the DGX1 and 2 today, that's the monolithic supercomputer of the AI world. We're figuring out how to generally uh, how to apply parallelism to general purpose AI workloads now. We're in the process of that, that transition. So that's the basis for uh, this, this uh, story arc that says there's uh, a fair amount of similarity between the HPC history and where we think the AI uh, technology and the AI market is going to go uh, uh, based on that similarity. There'll be differences, of course. AI is different in, in some fundamental ways. but. Uh, we can learn something at least in the short term, short to midterm, based on that that story arc. Right. I, I think I, I don't want that point to be lost. That something like a DGX one is the monolithic supercomputer of AI, and that yeah. there are other things that look like that. Right. So if you look at not to, not to overdo it on the supercomputing side here, but something like the Summit uh, architecture, where you've got um, Power Nine plus Volta GPUs, right. many many nodes of this. Right. Right. It, it's the same idea. So it's still a monolithic architecture with some scale-out features. So talk to me about the differences between how you've looked at that workload between um, HPC and AI and what you see future workloads looking like and what architecture meets that. So that is, yes, four questions in one. Sorry. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. We, we operate in parallel. Uh, okay, so uh, do, when the, the HPC industry was going through this transition from monolithic to uh, scale-out, the, the storage systems of the day weren't able to feed the, the beast. And so we were the, one of the first people to implement a parallel file system. So that's fully 20 years ago now that we started work on this. Uh, uh, company was founded in 1999. Um, the, the difference in workloads is that the HPC definition of good performance is total wall clock time till the result comes out. That includes IO wait time. And so the uh, the engineers of the time, the software engineers, customized their software to minimize the I.O. wait times. And so they built their software knowing what parallel file systems could achieve, uh, the parallel file systems of the, de of the day. Uh, AI workloads are different in the sense that uh, you can't put all the data into one large file and stream it. Right? That's what it, parallel file systems are really good at. Uh, there is an enforced r randomness requirement that you can't reprocess the, the images if you're doing image processing. Uh, you can't reprocess them in the same order you did last time or you'll overtrain your model. So that randomness is where the ulti ultimately where the uh, requirement for low latency comes from. Uh, the other is that GPUs are really expensive and you don't want the dang thing to go idle. Right? So um, that's the, the biggest single difference between an HPC storage subsystem and something that's uh, been tuned for the AI market is this addition of a latency requirement. Many other things are the same, and we'll get to those. Probably. Yeah. So, what is to you the right architecture for doing this? Especially if you think about um, uh, mixed workloads. So, so not just people that are doing raw AI. They've got training and they've got inference, and that's it. Right. A lot of the most interesting use cases, they're trying to do multiple things. Right. So, even think about HPC for a second, or or what Mark was talking about with Noah, where you've got multiple different things. So, you've got uh, traditional numerical simulations running, you're doing training and you're inferencing and you're, you're taking data from, from a simulation and feeding that all back through. Right. What do you need to do this? We've, we've listened to, to some, some novel ways to do that, some emerging mm -hmm. ways. Yep. So, so explain this to us. Sure. So um, the original HPC sites, again, this, I'm, I'm using the HPC history as, 
an example of the story arc and, and, and trying to uh, use that logic to predict what the future of the AI marketplace is going to be. So HPC sites started out as single purpose. There's a, you were a weather forecasting site, and that's what you did, and so you could tune your storage subsystem to support weather. Uh, over time, they've turned into general purpose resource sites. So one large HPC infrastructure, because it's scale out, you can carve out 20 nodes over here and do some small task, and 400 serve for some big task over there. Um, that shared resource environment, because you want one storage subsystem to support your one compute cluster, even though it's carved up, um, that meant that the workloads hitting the HPC storage were a lot more random, a lot more variable over time, a lot, many different, a lot of different characteristics, not just the clean and simple I.O. That, that used to be there. It's our belief and contention that the, as the enterprises adopt AI, you'll see the same thing happen. Every enterprise is going to be interested. They're going to try it out. They're going to have 17 different species of neural networks that they're going to want to try. And uh, all of them will be offered, operating on different time scales. I need this sooner. I need that one later. Uh, that looks like a randomized workload, not just random within a, uh, a training data set, but uh, different data sets coming and going over time. This team is, they, they finished tweaking their, their model, they did a bunch of thinking, now they want to run a set of, do a bunch of runs on their training data set. So you're going to see uh, a workload hitting the storage that's not something you can tune for because it's variable over time and variable in many different ways. So that, that's the, the HPC experience applied to AI. It sounds reasonable and logical. It, it does. It, make, it makes sense. It makes sense in enterprise, not just not yes. just HPC at, at, as an right. academic scientific thing. Right. It's, it's a broader. Um, That's where the growth is going to be. Is there's all those hundreds of enterprises that say, "We got to get me some AI. What are we doing here?" Right. We got to get me some AI. Do, yeah. do people say that? <laughs> well, yes. Uh, so, so just one last question. So, um, is is this this mixed workload uh, thing that we're talking about here? Is this something that is emerging, or, or you've seen this happening over the last two years or three years? When did yeah. this start? Um, virtually all of our customers actually are running pieces of AI. The, the vast majority of our customers are already running AI because we service the the shared resource center HPC customers, and they've all got AI projects going. So we're seeing AI hit our storage today. Um, and we believe that trend is going to continue, although the feedback we're getting from them is that there will be more and more AI uh, in their HPC environments and they're uh, um, hitting their storage. One more thing I want to add to it, though, is the, uh, the mental model, I think, is important that HPC isn't a particular technology. It's a suite of best practices on how you build a, a single computation that spans multiple computers. And so AI will, develop, will start from the HPC best practices because it's a good enough model to start. It will diverge. The question that we need to answer is how much will it diverge? I personally believe that it will all still be called a, uh, HPC in the same sense that Ethernet today has nothing to do with the Ethernet of the 1980s, but it's still called Ethernet. So I believe that HPC label will stick, but the, the workloads that are, that are hitting I mean, genomic workloads are different than weather workloads to begin with, so there'll be a lot of workloads. So, just another data point. Yep. Uh, great, Curtis, thank you. And I think we're all, uh, I want everyone to agree with us after these, these panels and talks today that storage is A, no longer an afterthought, and it's actually technically pretty interesting again. It, yes. it is different and, and developing and emerging. So, thank you, Curtis. Great, thank you. <laughs>